But, and I have a really big but, you better believe this, Nick Saban has released the truth about all of this, believe it or not. And it's really funny because you wouldn't think somebody like Nick Saban would even come out and say this, but he did. And the saga continues. You thought it was over? Guess what? It's never over. So last time we talked about Nick Saban, Alabama, and this quarterback battle, we talked about some of the conspiracy theories floating around. If you haven't seen that video, you're going to have to check it out. And most people didn't even think they're conspiracy theories. They're just logical explanations. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick, though, real quick, though. Somebody on Twitter happened to find my old 7th grade PE video footage. Let me show you all this. Well, it's not even video footage, my bad. It's just a couple of pictures, but yeah. As you can see, that's definitely me, White Randy. That's what they call me, and I can confirm this is me in these pictures. Don't even get me started, man. Back in seventh grade PE class, I mossing people wasn't even like a rare occasion. That was just normal. I made so many catches like this, it got to the point where people didn't even care. They're like, oh yeah, he does that like three times a day. I'm telling you, man, your boy White Randy back in my prime. I could play a little bit. But yeah, let's get a move on with this video. And real quick, real quick, there is a ton of you watching that aren't subscribed. We are trying to hit 300k subscribers. Do me a solid. It's 100% free. Doesn't hurt. You just benefits the channel tremendously. Go subscribe. We're trying to hit 300k and yeah, that's all there is to it. But let's get back on track here and let's talk about what we need to talk about. If you want a long story short, conspiracy theory number one is that Jail Milrow, the reason he didn't play in that game is because he was suspended for the game. It was one of those quiet suspensions where Saban brought him in on Thursday or Friday and was like, hey man, I don't like your attitude. It's not good. You're not playing on Saturday. That was conspiracy theory number one. Conspiracy theory number two is that Saban was trying to send a message to the rest of the country because everybody was criticizing him for starting Jalen Milrow and rolling with him. And Saban was trying to show the rest of the world, hey, I was right. So what did Saban do? He played Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson to show everybody else that we had the right guy in the first place. Me personally, I believe in conspiracy theory number one. It's more of a logical explanation to me, but a lot of people think number two's right. For example, Cody Bell here, thank you for the comment by the way, his comment got over 130 likes in which he states, he believes conspiracy theory number two, Saban was trying to send a message to the rest of the country and even the Bama fans. Cody stated, I 100% believe he did this to prove the Bama fans were wrong about their quarterback opinion following the Texas game. And after reading some of the comments like that one from Cody, I am starting to lean towards, hey, conspiracy theory number two, it might be more right than I originally thought. It might be more right. That doesn't make sense, but you get what I'm trying to say. What's well, a better way to word it? It might be more of a reasonable explanation. There we go. And there's a fair share of people that think not just one, but both of the theories, they could be right. This person stated, both theories could be true at the same time. Miro could have been ticked off because of the lack of first team reps in practice and got an attitude but the whole reason he wasn't getting the first team reps was because Saban already decided to play the other two quarterbacks to shut everybody else up. Wow, that's a great comment. Thank you for that. And yeah, that makes a ton of sense to me. And it goes back to this, guys. I know we're labeling these as conspiracy theories, but are they even theories? Is it just common sense? I don't know. You be the judge in the comment section. And I would love to read off more of your guys' comments, but we're going to read off two more and we got to get a move on. Brother Wynn stated, I think your conspiracy theory number two was partly correct. The hater isn't the media. It's Tommy Reese. Reese wants Butner to be the starter and Saban doesn't. Since Reese wouldn't know talent if it hit him in the face, he pushed to bring Butner along. My guess is Saban has had enough of the pestering and used Miro's bad attitude as an excuse to put Reese in check. He knew Butner wouldn't rise to the occasion, putting the nail in Reese's Butner's coffin. And wow, that's also another great comment and a great perspective. I really didn't even think about that until I read that comment because now that you bring it up, yeah, I would assume maybe a little bit that Tommy Reese was advocating and pushing for, or not pushing for, but pushing to bring in Tyler Buckner. Because for those of you who don't know, Tommy Reese was offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, and that's where Tyler Buckner played at previously. So maybe Tommy Reese was in Saban's ear saying, hey, you know, I think Buckner might be better than Milrow, and blah, 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 blah. You get the point. And Saban was like, all right, I'll show you Buckner ain't better than Milrow. We'll play him, and you'll see for yourself. And yeah, we saw what happened against South Florida. He was awful. One more comment, though, one more comment. And man, these are really great comments, but we just can't read comments all throughout this video. We got to get a move on to the main point. I think both could be true. Saban heard the media reaction got fed up and decided that since we're playing USF, they want Butner, give him Butner. Miro, obviously not knowing what's going on, thinks coach has given up on him, and he had a poor reaction, which led to the quote-unquote suspension, and I really like that part. That makes a ton of sense, continuing along here after suspension, 
Simpson got all of Miro's minutes as a result, and thankfully the team still cares about winning, so they pulled themselves together at the end to avoid a devastatingly bad loss. Devastatingly. Is that how you say that? I've never seen that word in my life. We could sit up here all day and talk about just these theories alone, but I think everybody, we're agreeing in the comment section of what went down. But, and I have a really big but, you better believe this, Nick Saban has released the truth about all of this, believe it or not. And it's not to say that our quote-unquote conspiracy theories are wrong, but Saban just came out and stated the cold hard truth about Jalen Milrow. And it's really funny because you wouldn't think somebody like Nick Saban would even come out and say this, but he did. In a recent interview, I'm not going to show you all of it because it's boring. Here's the only part you need to know. Nick Saban told ESPN that he played Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson against South Florida and not Jalen Milrow because he had promised all three of his quarterbacks playing time this season. And when Nick Saban was asked if there was any other reasons for it, here's what he said, quote unquote. That was it. Nothing else. <laughs> oh, man. Do y'all believe that or not? Let me know in the comment section. Nick Saban said, nope, that was the only reason. Nothing else. I just promised uh, Tyler Buckner here and Ty Simpson I'd play him, and I did. I'll tell you this much. I think it's a combination of two things. Number one, what Saban said. He probably did promise all three of these guys they were going to play at some point throughout the season. He probably promised Tyler Buckner, hey, we'll bring you in, and you'll get one shot to prove yourself. And if you mess up... You're not going to play much, and that's what happened. He probably did the same thing for Ty Simpson, and we all know Jalen Milrow, he was going to play. I personally think it's a combination of that, and also he just wanted to prove that Jalen Milrow was the guy. Because he knew deep down against South Florida, no matter how bad we played, we could play our worst ball game. We were going to walk out of there with a win. So he was like, all right, Ty Simpson, Ty Buckner, here's your tryout. You got one tryout and one tryout only, because after this game, we're getting into SEC play. We can't mess around. We got Ole Miss, a top 15 team. But taking a look at the comments here, this is a good point. If Miro plays well against Texas, neither one of them ever takes a step on the field. Stop the cap. That's 100% true because if Jalen Miro goes out here and plays great against Texas and Alabama wins by 20, well then, do you really believe Ty Simpson and Tyler Butner they're going to play against South Florida? No, unless it's in garbage time. So that's a fairly interesting point. Let me know in the comments section. Do you believe Saban or not? I'll put it this way. It's one of those things where he didn't completely lie and there's some truth to it, but He's not releasing all the details, if that makes sense. For example, it's like when you're growing up with your buddies and you tell your mom, hey, me and the boys, we're going to go to this Halloween party. And you wind up going to the Halloween party, but you also go to Walmart, you go to this chick's house you're seeing, you go do this, you go do that, and you come back and your mom's like, well, what'd you do tonight? And you're like, oh, I went to the Halloween party. And then she asked, well, was that it? Did you do anything else? And you're like, oh, no, I just kind of stay at the party. I feel like that was a terrible analogy and <laughs> example, but you get the point. There's some truth to what you're saying, but you're not releasing all the details to it. That's how I feel about what Nick Saban had to say, but he also stated this. Check this out. And this is referring to coming off of the Texas loss in the South Florida game where they didn't play so good. Saban stated, we'll respond. We've got a better team than the way we played last week. I don't know if we got a good enough team to beat Ole Miss or anybody else we play, but we've got a better team than what we we play last week. I know that sounded weird, but yeah, Saban sort of repeated himself there, continuing along. Texas has a dang good team, probably one of the best five teams in the country, and we were ahead of them in the fourth quarter. Nothing too crazy there. Nick Saban in these interviews, he's so used to it. He knows what to say and what not to say. He's always going to give his team a piece of humble pie, and he's never going to overhype his team. Alabama could go out here and win five championships in a row, and he'll say, oh yeah, we got some things to work on. That's just coach talk, but I want to show you this. I had about three to four people send this to me or tag it to me on Twitter. And by the way, if there's any big time news you want me to talk about, all you gotta do is tweet it to me or mention me. So apparently Paul Feinbaum has taken more shots than Nick Saban. He stated, he looks lost right now. I was with him a week ago for the Texas game that morning and there was something missing. This isn't the first time somebody has sent me a quote from Paul Feinbaum where he's always hating on Nick Saban in Alabama and degrading them. I get sent something like this at least once every two weeks for the past three years. That's all he does. And me personally, I don't watch Paul Feinbaum and I don't listen to him. Never listen to the guy. You know why? Because I don't listen to nerds and geeks talk about sports. He is a five foot seven, 145 pound man that has never played a sport. He's a geek. That's what he is. He's a nerd. And y'all think I'm trying to be funny about this. Oh yeah, he got, no. That's what he is. He's a nerd. He's a straight up nerd. And there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. I'm just telling you the facts. And the reason I don't take anything he says seriously is because he wasn't a competitor, so he doesn't know what it takes. And I'm not saying your opinion is irrelevant if you haven't played football at the NFL or collegiate level. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just talking about playing a sport somewhat somewhere in your life, whether that's in 
middle school, JV or varsity, or maybe some of you played at the collegiate or NFL level. That's what I'm talking about, because if you play, let's say, water polo, for example, where at least you know the hard work and effort it goes into being an athlete and competing week in and week out. And my problem is you've got nerds like Paul Feinbaum that have the audacity to even speak on stuff like this. I'm going to just stop right there before I completely lose my mind and rant on that for another five to six minutes. Bottom line is, Alabama fans, Jalen Miro, he's our guy. He's our quarterback, whether you like it or not. I personally, I'm in favor of this, and I may talk about this later tonight, so just stay tuned for that. I'm curious, though. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, Robert! <laughs>